Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome or welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at the journal that I've been using all year long, my Citrus Book Bindery Bullet Journal. So this was super custom to me. I got it as a gift from my mother-in-law two Christmases ago. But yeah, today we're just gonna be looking at this, what I think of it now, now that I've used it for what, 11 months or so. We're gonna be looking at the pages, the features, all of the things to see if I really enjoy this bullet journal enough to use it in 2024 as well. What I did like, what I didn't like. Let's hop into that. But ooh, before we do that, I'm Julia. I do bullet journal, creative planning, fountain pens and traveling and inks. So if that sounds like your vibe, consider subscribing, like the video if you enjoy, and let's, let's take a closer look. Okay, so like I said, this notebook is by Citrus Book Bindery. It was super customizable. They are based out of the UK, and if you look at their site, you'll see that you can customize your journal to a tea. You can choose the page count. You can choose what type of paper, what color paper, what type of ruling you want on the paper, whether you want fat pockets and a waterproof jacket. There are so many things that you can customize on this. So I just think that this is a super interesting review because I did specify what I wanted to a T. However, I specified what I wanted two or three years ago. And so it's funny to see now what I thought would be my perfect notebook then and what I think about it now. So anyways, this is the cover. I really love this eggplant color and I will leave the specs for this notebook and links down below, but it's a kind of hard, I don't know if it's like a vegan leather something, but um, it is a, hardcover with an open spine. I do think on the website it says that the cover's weatherproof, but I mean that only can take you so far because the spine is open and so I really do just still love this open spine. I think it's just so pretty and I just thought it'd be super cool to see like how an open spine would grow and just look after some use and it still looks pretty pretty dang good. It doesn't look gross and dirty like I thought it was gonna look, so that's pretty cool. Cleaning this thing is no problem. I've only had to like wipe it down once and I used water to do that and it looks, you know, brand new. I don't carry this around too, too often just because it is quite large. That probably does make a difference. I think earlier in the year I was carrying it around a bit more, but then I just started using like smaller planners and travel notebooks and things like that. And so this ended up staying at home more. This one is a B5 and I just want to show you another B5 just because you know sometimes things will have it listed as one size and it may not be exactly what you think. So this is an Archer and Olive B5 and it lines up pretty perfectly. So it is what I would think a true B size B5. I also got a back pocket on this because I love sticking in cards and just quick reference notes and just little keepsakes in the back of my journal. So I thought that was really important to have and I am still glad that I have that here. This doesn't have a pen loop, which I think bothered me more in the beginning of the year, but now I like to carry my pens in little pen cases and little pen sleeves so it doesn't really, bother me as much anymore and plus I usually want to carry more than just one anyways so it doesn't really bother me that this doesn't have a pen loop especially now that this mostly stays on my desk. So page count, page count I do believe 238. So whenever you do order these from Citrus Book Bindery they have slims and wide and chunky and that all comes with a certain page count and I do believe this is a wide so 238 pages if I remember correctly and I got the multimedia paper which is 120 gsm and I thought that held up pretty well I did some painting in here like right off the bat in January I did some gouache painting that held up just fine 
of course, markers were fine. Some watercolor here. So it definitely handled media very well as advertised. So I did like the paper type mostly. As I started getting into fountain pens, however, I started to want more smooth coated paper. And this paper is not coated and it does have feedback writing with fountain pens. And so there came a point sometime in September here where I just cut out some fountain pen friendly paper and just glued it over the whole page and was a happy camper. So probably not the ideal situation for a notebook where you would want to glue in another piece of paper on top of a whole page, like what's the point? But it is what it is. So some, not all pens, it's really strange. Some pens work nice and smooth on this paper and some pens just have a little bit too much feedback for me and I like a smooth writing experience. So yeah, that's something that definitely changed since the beginning of the year using this notebook. And then looking at the page color, okay, looking at the page color, I'm going to compare to an Archer and Olive since that is 160 GSM and bright white. And so you can see that comparison there. And then also with uh, Loistrom 1917, which is a little more cream. So you can see that it's a little closer to the Loistrom, not as creamy. Let's see if I can pull it up. And it definitely is a little darker than the Archer and Olive. Hopefully you can see that it's a nice medium, kind of a warmer white than this kind of cool toned white. So just something to keep in mind. The dots are a little bit darker than the Archer and Olive dots. I think mostly because these dots are like a darker bluish gray and these are more of a true gray. So just wanted to show you because it's something to keep in mind. And I think otherwise, okay, going back to the page count in this notebook as well, I was so excited, so excited to be able to fit an entire year in one bullet journal. At the beginning of the year, and when I set this notebook up, you could not tell me anything. I was so excited. But... Looking back now and knowing how much my tastes have changed throughout just these last 11 months, like I would have loved a fresh start and maybe start in something with fountain pen friendly smooth paper. I would have loved that. But I just felt so invested in just finishing this thing off. So I did not do that as you saw. I even resorted to covering the entire page with another sheet of paper. So with that said, I can pretty much say that I probably won't be using another notebook like this next year, but that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy this experience overall. I just think my tastes have changed throughout the year. I have gotten more into my fountain pen hobby and I want to enjoy those a little bit more in my day-to-day -day task writing. And so I am very, excited to show you guys what I'm thinking for 2024. It is a bit of a change. I am trying so many new things, but at the same time simplifying. So definitely subscribe to see what I end up with and to keep hanging out. Leave a comment. What are you doing for 2024? And yeah, if you want to see my excitement and setting up this bullet journal, I will leave that video for you here and I will catch you all in the next one.